Hello, dear friends, partners, and distinguished guests. Uh, my name is Tal Schneider. I'm a political and diplomatic correspondent. Welcome to the Society for International Development Annual Conference in the memory of the late Dr. Yuda Paz, the founder of SID Israel, mentor and professional authority for many who are engaged in international development and humanitarian aid. Um, we are delighted to have with us uh, some very uh, esteemed guests from all over the world. This is a great opportunity to mention that all of Seed Israel work is made possible thanks, um, thanks to the ongoing generous support of Pierce Foundation. Okay, we are now continuing with the next panel, uh, a panel of the foreign ministries from Nepal and Togo. I will, pre I will present them shortly. Uh, I just want to uh, present my guest here at the table. Uh, with me here is uh, Mrs. Einat Schlein from the Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Chief uh, Director of Mashav, it's the, uh, the Israel International uh, aid agency. Uh, also, Enat was uh, Israel's ambassador to Jordan and many other roles she took in, uh, in the uh, Israel foreign ministry for many, many years. And I would like also to welcome uh, the Honorable Mr. Uh, Pardeep Kumar Gawaili, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal. He is serving in his role as Foreign Affairs Minister uh, for years now. He, prior to that, uh, he was, a, he was a, in the Constitutional Assembly and also a member of the House of Representatives and Minister of Culture, Tourism, and Civil Aviation. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, in a few short uh, minutes later on, we will also have the Foreign Affairs Minister of Togo. I will present him shortly after we uh, finish the discussion with Mr. Uh, Gawaili. Um, so maybe you can tell us, uh, Mr. Gawaili, thank you for, uh, for being here with us. Um, maybe you can tell us about the immediate, immediate and uh, consequences of COVID-19 in, in your area, in South A Asia, but also in your country, uh, Nepal in particular. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Society for Industrial Development Israel for kind invitation to be the part of this very important event uh, theming the changing face of the development cooperation in humanitarian aid amid COVID-19. I uh, found the theme extremely uh, relevant and timely. Uh, before uh, I would like to share the uh, COVID pandemic situation in the region and in our country, let me uh, greet our Israeli friends uh, with whom we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of our diplomatic relation. We were Thank supposed you. the high level exchange of visits uh, throughout the years, but due to the COVID pandemic, uh, the, those visits meetings were suspended, however, um, uh, postponed. However, we hope that uh, in the days ahead, we'll be able to uh, meet physically uh, Nepal was the first uh, country in South Asia to recognize the state of Israel. So we fondly uh, cherish our friendly relation with Israel and we hope that uh, our relation will elevate it in a new heights in the days ahead. Uh, having said that, uh, let me briefly uh, update or share the latest uh, situation uh, of the COVID-19 in our country and in the region. I didn't say uh, the global pandemic has affected everyone uh, and everywhere with, this, with its unprecedented scope and speed. Uh, more than 73 million people infected, more than 1.6 million lives have lost, and almost all nation economies and communities have been affected. Uh, Asia is uh, about 15, uh, 50,000 new cases daily, uh, more than two thirds are from the South Asia. So it is uh, in a critical situation still, uh, uh, though intensity is uh, not uh, similar in South Asia and Central Asia, it is more acute. 
uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, countries has been able to contain. For Nepal, uh, now we have uh, 250,000 uh, cases uh, diagnosed. Uh, but uh, the fatality rate is uh, comparatively low, just 0.6%. Uh, now we have uh, 1,600 plus uh, uh, lives lost. And the government of Nepal is trying its best to contain uh, this pandemic. Uh, our priority is to save the lives of the people from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and save the livelihoods from the uh, negative impact of the COVID-19. And uh, for it, we have introduced major uh, initiatives uh, for economic recovery and to uh, the uh, containment of the uh, COVID-19 uh, in society. Mm -hmm. um yeah. Um, I have with me uh, Ms. The, Mrs. Uh, Ambassador uh, Schlein, and we want to talk together about the about the, the, the cooperation of you know international aid and help uh, for development uh, countries and you know uh, bilateral uh, uh, cooperation. So um, how do you how do you see the cooperation with countries such as Nepal or other countries South Asia? And maybe if you want to ask uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister a question, that's also. Uh, can be directed. <laughs> well, thank you, Tal, and uh, good evening, I should say, to Nepal, uh, Honorable Minister. Um, COVID-19 has definitely transformed our world in many, many ways, and it also transformed the way that we work, the way that we think. I think that um, one of the, the first effects is the fact that we lost access to each other. No flights, yeah. uh, fear of pandemic, and so on and so forth, which actually uh, creates barriers and borders, which is the opposite of what we try as diplomats, what we're trying to, to, to avoid. We're trying to, to link people and bridge them. So as Mashav, the, uh, uh, who's been uh, engaged in international development already since 1958, we had to work really fast. And this is what we've done. I think the key words here would be adapting and transforming. We had to think on our feet. We had to be really creative, and we've done many things in many countries, including in Nepal, and, uh, and, but in, in many countries uh, around the world. We had to, to transform everything that we do. Mashav is all about uh, capacity building. Mm -hmm. It's all about uh, investing in the human resource and uh, offering Israel's expertise. We may lack uh, the magnitude of budgets that other aid agencies have, but we, we, um, we are uh, we are privileged with expertise mm -hmm. and and with a lot uh, uh, in this regard. So we had to move all of our efforts online, mm -hmm. on the one hand, and and immediately once the pandemic broke, we started shifting all of our work, work and and concentrating on assisting other countries to fight the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this is what we've done. And I'm happy to talk some more about it. But um, I'm wondering uh, if I can ask you, sir. Um, I know that there, there were many uh, um, things that happened in Nepal in this regard. We've had uh, uh, Nepalese students who, um, who stayed in Israel and continued their uh, uh, agricultural education here during the pandemic. Some of them have changed uh, recently. Uh, we've had some, uh, um, some assistance projects in Nepal. I'm wondering if, uh, how this was accepted in Nepal. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, uh, that is really very, very interesting topics. Uh, Nepal is uh, grateful uh, to its uh, neighbors and other multilateral uh, donors and development partners who are quite generous enough to this uh, tough time. Uh, multilateral institutions like World Bank, IMF, uh, Asian Development Bank, uh, and uh, the neighboring countries, India, China, and major development partners, US, UK, and other countries are continuously supporting uh, in our fight against COVID-19. And uh, I uh, especially I would like to thank Israel and Masab, uh, which is uh, doing a wonderful job uh, for Nepalese people as well. You just... Uh, mention about uh, the Nepali uh, youths uh, which are working uh, in Israel under the uh, scheme of on and learn, learn and on. Uh, the uh, 
skill uh, transfer skill learning and transfer uh, has very very uh, effective uh, for our country many uh, returnees um, who uh, come uh, with uh, the new technologies and the knowledge they have started their own uh, businesses uh, in their uh, villages and uh, townships and uh, last i fondly recall uh, the my meeting with uh, the then masaf head uh, in kathmandu who was uh, visiting nepal last year and during that time we uh, agreed to establish the seven provincial uh, center of excellence in uh, agriculture sector and now we have uh, uh, already um, finalized the MOU and protocol in that regard, and we hope that uh, very soon uh, those uh, center of excellence will uh, start, and we, it will be very very uh, effective for the uh, technology transfer which uh, the uh, Israel uh, have the expertise. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, the other. Um, people who are working in israel they are very happy uh, for the working environment there especially the caregivers and other so uh, we hope that uh, such partnership and especially the technology transfer advanced mm -hmm. technology um, transfer for nepal's agriculture and the smes will be very very beneficial to the uh, nepali people and especially in the context of the our uh, drive to the economic recovery after uh, due to the caused by uh, this covid pandemic so um, mr uh, foreign affairs minister as we enter um, you know we are all know that we are entering a global crisis period we don't know how many years it's going to take but definitely we have some difficult years ahead of us and um, you know talking with ambassador schlein i, I, I suppose some countries um, are looking for, you know, international assistance, um, not specifically from Israel, but from the IMF, as we heard before, from international organization. How do you see your country and maybe the region um, looking for, for development uh, cooperation in the coming years? What is your expectations? Uh, actually, uh, prior to uh, this pandemic, Nepal was in the uh, road of uh, rapid economic uh, transformation and uh, one of the fastest um, growing economy in South Asia. We were second after Bangladesh. We uh, again uh, achieved almost uh, around 7.1% uh, um, growth uh, in three consecutive years. So we were quite encouraged and uh, we have already uh, uh, made the uh, commitment that we will be uh, graduated from the list developed status at earliest and will be become middle income country by 2030, uh, achieving all SDG goals. But uh, this pandemic has affected severely, mm -hmm. especially uh, three, four areas have been uh, more affected, hardest, it hardest. Uh, one of the major uh, affected area is tourism you know nepal mm -hmm. uh, nepal's uh, income one of the major source of the income is uh, tourism uh, ambassador schlein would you uh, comment on what uh, the foreign affairs minister just said and how do you see you know future years with respect to international development well as i said before i believe the key word is is adapting we have to adapt and um, I want to share with you some of the things that we've done in the recent month Mashav which trained uh, over 300,000 people throughout the years normally in Israel or through instructors that would uh, travel to a different country had to reinvent itself so we've had hundreds and hundreds of virtual webinars mm -hmm. um, transferring uh, knowledge and expertise uh, uh, online. We also agricultural or knowledge agriculture, online, but, but it's uh, it's not just agriculture. I'll tell you a little story about agriculture in a sec. But um, whether it, we speak of agriculture, innovation, 
uh, education, in any field, uh, speaking of, of uh, uh, psychological aspects of the pandemic and so on, we've convened virtual tables, uh, bringing in uh, seniors from Israel and from other countries, trying to share uh, experience, uh, uh, exchange views and expertise. I thought that was really useful. We also moved, uh, and again, even with agriculture, to virtual courses. And, uh, and uh, one of Would the nicest- Would you say the countries? Yes, in various countries, for example, I see that the minister is back. I'll just complete this story. Um, and I'll tell you that um, um, President Rivlin visited the Pacific Islands last year, and we promised to build them model farms and, and, and talk to them and share expertise regarding agriculture. Now, unfortunately, no one can travel, and some of these countries actually are not affected by the pandemic, so they don't really want guests, but they do want our expertise. So, Mashab's uh, uh, agricultural center has been instructing them online, on a weekly basis. I, in my mind, they take the laptops and go with it to the fields where, where all the work is inspected and they get new, uh, uh, um, new instruction and, and problem solving. I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. So, Mr. Foreign Minister, you were cut off uh, just uh, about the tourism. We heard from you that you are expecting maybe a change in the future yeah. with respect to the tourism business. Uh, maybe you can give us a closing argument because we have to move on uh, to other speakers. But I just want you to finish off what, what you just started to say. Sure. So uh, we want uh, broader international cooperation and collaboration to have the uh, economic recovery. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the uh, Universal coverage of vaccine is extremely important because until and unless uh, every people can receive uh, the uh, vaccine, uh, world cannot be immune for uh, the pandemic. So uh, COVID vaccine should be dealt as global public goods. It should not be dealt as uh, uh, means for uh, um, pile up of the profits. So we need uh, global cooperation for the um, availability and access to the vaccines and the uh, global cooperation for the economic uh, recovery, especially for the uh, exploring the new jobs, resuming the tourism mm -hmm. and transforming the new technology so that uh, world can achieve the SDG goals by uh, 2030, uh, despite of this uh, severe setback. If we can develop a synergy between the developing and um, developed country, then we can uh, overcome the uh, these gaps. So, uh, international cooperation is extremely important in this regard. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Foreign Affairs Minister Gaiwali, for taking the evening of your time and uh, talking to our you know, in our conference. And I uh, hope to meet in uh, Nepal as a tourist. <laughs> um, we are now going to proceed with the program.